Today's mission is fueled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, viewers like you, the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television, and Delta Airlines. Because learning about geography is a great way for kids to learn about each other, no matter where they hang their hats. Delta Airlines, on top of the world. Curses. There's too much diversity in the United States. I want everyone to be the same. Evil. I know. With one theft, I'll change the history of immigration. This crime calls for a servile. Methinks I heard thy summons, mistress. Yes. I'm sending you through the time port to New York City in the year 1886. There's something very special I want you to steal. I serve for honor, for evil, forever! Good! This info game will give you all the details. Now, get going. <laughs> Time pilots, Sir Vile just stole something from the past. You've got 28 minutes to get it back, or history will change forever. Initiate chrono skimmer launch sequence. Boot up the chrono computer. Power up the engines. Extend the temporal sequencer. Now, get going. We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Chrono skimmer. Engines hot. File villains. Evil plot. Our brain squadron leader will help us get the So hang on tight because we've got a very big mission, but very little time. So let's meet today's time pilot, starting with Matt Sporer. Come on, Matt. Welcome aboard, buddy. Good to see you. And Andy Andrews. Andy, nice to have you in the squadron channel. And Rachel Lucas. Come on, Rachel. Nice to have you on this mission. All right, time pilots. Just so you know, we depend on fact fuel to power the chrono skimmer, and you guys will be generating that fuel with your answers. Now, each of you is equipped with 100 power points. So, let's check in with the Chrono Skimmer engine crew. All right. Couldn't leave home without them. So, they look ready and raring to go. Let's begin our pursuit of Servile. Chief, what's our mission profile? Squadron, your time target is 1886. Destination, New York City. The people of France had recently helped pay for a monument to the friendship between their country and the U.S. The huge gift was shipped in pieces to America, where it was reassembled and placed on an island in New York Harbor. In 1886, it was officially dedicated. The monument is a symbol of freedom, and it later became a symbol of U.S. immigrants as well. Or so history told us till now. When Sir Vile went back in time and ungallantly grabbed the gift. Thanks for the info, Chief. All right, pilots. For ten power points, what did Sir Vile steal? Was it Ellis Island, the Statue of Liberty, or the French Embassy? Remembering the clues we just heard? Monument to American French friendship, located in New York Harbor, and symbol of freedom and immigration. All right, guys, lock on to an answer as soon as you can there, so we can begin this. All right, Matt, what'd you say, pal? Statue of Liberty. All right, Andy? Statue of Liberty. And Rachel? Statue of Liberty. Well, you know what, guys? Correct answer is Statue of Liberty. That's what we like to see, guys. Ten points for everybody. And you know, pilots, although it's commonly called the Statue of Liberty, the actual name of this monument is Liberty Enlightening the World. Well, now we know what survival stole. We want to get it back, don't we? But I'll tell you, if one of you today can retrieve that loot and capture Carmen Sandiego. 
you'll win a complete multimedia computer system, all right? So, what are we waiting around for? Let's go get it. Engine room, warp to the time of the crime. <laughs> All right, pilots, we followed Sir Vile to the year 1886, but he's about to do some globe hopping in the 1880s. So it's time for global pursuit. Grab your controls, watch the globe on your screen, and buzz in when you think you know the answer. If you're right, you get five PowerPoints, and if you're wrong, you lose five, okay? Remember, we're in the 1880s. Here we go. Sir Vile's in the country where a universal language called Esperanto is being invented. What do you say, guys? Welcome on to an answer. Yes, Matt. Poland. Correct, Poland. Now he's in the city where Jane Addams found a settlement house to help immigrants in America. Going again to Matt. Chicago. Correct. Adams was an important social reformer who was eventually awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, so you know. Now Servile is in an African country recently colonized by France. Going this time to Rachel. Tunisia. Yes, Tunisia. Very good. Now he's at the border of the country where troops captured Geronimo, ending the last major U.S. Indian War. Going to Matt again. Mexico. Yes, Mexico. He dashed to the city where the world's largest gold mines begin operating. Going again to Matt. Johannesburg. Yes, Johannesburg. Very nice, guys. All right, let's see how well we did there. Matt has 130 power points. Matt seems pretty happy about that. Andy has 110, and Rachel has 115. Very nice, guys. All right, that's the good news. Bad news is Servile just skipped out of Johannesburg right before we got there. That's what I just thought. Hey, you know, we're in luck, though. That's the clue finder. It's locked on to someone in the future. Let's bring them on board, see if they can help us. Excuse me, my name's Kevin Shinnick, and we're looking for Survival. Did you say Kevin Shinnick? Yes, Let's I did. Let's make that Kevin Shin. Uh, no, I said Shinnick. Actually, I like my name the way it is. It was. What are you doing? Listen, pal, I register immigrants here at Ellis Island all day long, and trust me, shortening names is the way to go. Sometimes I do it because I can't understand the immigrant's foreign accent. Sometimes I just do it because I feel like it. That's nice, but I'm not an immigrant. I'm just... Usually, you immigrants like you into having your names shortened. Makes them sound more like everybody else's, so you can fit in better in your new country. For example, I'll change Rabinovich to Robbins or Wudzitsky to White. Only one immigrant wanted his name made longer. Made me change it to Servile Owitzevich or Novice Tonnenberg. So Servile was there. You better watch it. He's one dangerous guy. You want to talk about dangerous guys? How about those tyrants these immigrants come to this country to get away from? Like the Tsar of Russia? I hear, whew, some of the stories about him. Really, that's great. But listen, uh, I'm not an immigrant, and I would like my name changed back to the way it was, you know? You think I got all day to change names back and forth? You don't like it? Talk to President McKinley. Next! Good God. Wow. All right, time pilots. That's one tough lady, but you gave us clues, so... We'll let her in again. All right, guys. Tell me where in time Servile has taken the Statue of Liberty. Is it the early 1800s, the early 1900s, or the late 1900s? Remembering the clues we just heard, Russia was ruled by a czar. McKinley was president. Immigrants arriving at Ellis Island. All right, guys, you heard the clues. Lock on to an answer as soon as you can so we can get underway. Get back that loot. Everybody in? Okay. Matt, what'd you say, pal? The early 1900s. All right, Andy? The early 1800s. Okay, Rachel? The early 1800s. All right, correct answer is the early 1900s. So 10 points for Matt. Very good. You know, pilots, Lady Liberty was an especially welcome symbol to immigrants escaping oppression in their home countries. But she won't be there to greet them if we don't get back the loot. So engine room, let's warp to the early 1900s. <laughs> Time pals, we made it back to the early 1900s. So far, so good. We're doing all right. And uh, wait a sec. Wait, guys, we've got trouble. That last warp depleted our fact fuel. We need to refuel with a data boost. Okay, time pals, I'll name a famous person. Your job, buzz in and tell me whether in the year 1901, that person was already dead or not yet born. If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five, okay? Remember, 1901, already dead or not yet born. Author, John Steinbeck. 
What do you say, guys? Yes, Rachel. Not yet born. Correct. He was born in 1902. Louis Pasteur, going to Mac. Already dead? Yes, he died in 1895. Mother Teresa, going again to Mac. Not yet born? Correct. Born 1910. Olympic star Jesse Owens, going to Mac. Not yet born? Yes, born 1913. Charles Dickens, going again to Mac. Already dead. Yes, died 1870. Very nice. It's a great job, Time Pilots, because you've replenished our fact fuel. And just a reminder, all our fact fuel is verified by Encyclopedia Britannica. Now let's continue our mission and get back to the Statue of Liberty. All right, guys, we should... Wait a second. Picking up a... Someone's breaking into our radio frequency. Wait a... Watch the view screen. Give up thy search, pilots, for I, Servile, have taken refuge in a time far too daunting for the likes of thee. I lurk in a nation at war with Japan, so people here are fearful of all things Japanese. Many are even suspicious of neighbors, perfectly patriotic citizens who happen to be of Japanese descent. The government orders thousands of these fine citizens from their homes, forcing them to live in detention camps simply because of their ethnic background. Is an exile that shocks even me. <laughs> okay, Squadron, you heard Servile. Where has he taken the Statue of Liberty? Germany in the late 1930s, the USA in the early 1940s, or the USSR in the late 1950s? Remembering the clues we just heard. Country at war with Japan. Citizens of Japanese descent ordered from their homes. Government forces them into detention camps. All right, guys, you heard the clues. Lock on to an answer. Get back to the Statue of Liberty. Everybody in? What do we say? Yeah, Matt, what'd you say, pal? I said the USA in the early 1940s. Okay, Andy? I said Germany in the late 1930s. And Rachel? Germany in the late 1930s. All right, correct answer is the USA in the early 1940s. Ten points for Matt. And you know what time, pilots? The war being fought at that time was World War II, and the detention of Japanese citizens was a dark moment for liberty in the U.S. But who knows what else will go wrong if we fail on our mission. So let's warp to the early 1940s. <laughs> so much for the time, pilots. <laughs> Pilot, we made it to the early 1940s, but Servile has zapped our fact fuel. It's time for a data boost. All right, Time Pilot, I'll name a historical event. It's up to you to buzz in and tell me whether it took place in the 1840s or the 1940s. If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five. Remember, 1840s or 1940s. First Chinese immigrants reach U.S. Yes, Matt. 1840s? Yes, late 1840s. Six-year war ends with 35 to 60 million lives lost. Going to Andy. 1840s? Actually, it's 1945. It was World War II. Most who died were probably civilians, not soldiers. Salt Lake City is founded as a refuge from religious persecution by Brigham Young and a group of Mormons. Going to Matt. 1840s? Yes, 1847. Gold is discovered at Sutter's Mill, California. Going to Rachel. 1840s. Uh, yes, 1848. It marked the beginning of the California gold rush. Finally, United Nations launched in San Francisco. Going to Matt. 1940s. Yes, 1945. Great job, guys. You've replenished our fact fuel. And that means we are ready for time travel from the early 1940s. But before we move ahead, let's check in with the TimeNet weather report. High pressure dominates the Northeast, and Republicans will dominate both houses of Congress for the first time in 40 years. Californians, there's a decided chill towards immigrants in the air. Let's put the maps in motion for a closer look at the immigration picture. More immigrants now come from this region, Mexico, than from any other place. Many Americans fear immigrants will take their jobs, and they think too much tax money is being spent on them. Californians have passed Proposition 187, which denies public education and public medical care to illegal immigrants. 
but the immigration climate may change. Many say Proposition 187 is racism, and parts of it will soon be declared unconstitutional. Coming up, the pollen count for the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. All right, luckily, we can always depend on the Time Net Weather Report for clues. All right, pilots, tell me the year where Servile is now hiding. Is it 1979, 1987, or 1994? Remembering the clues we just heard, Republicans gain control of both houses of Congress, Mexicans are largest immigrant group, and California voters approve Proposition 187. All right, guys, lock on to an answer. We're getting closer, I can feel it. Matt, what did you say? I said 1994. Andy? 1987. And Rachel? 1979. All right, correct answer. What a variety. 1994, guys. Ten points for Matt. Well, pilots, while the Statue of Liberty has welcomed immigrants for over a century, some people fear the current wave of immigration into the U.S. But, pilots, for us, we've got to make one final leap forward in time, and that means an ultimate data boost. All right, pilots, in an ultimate data boost, each correct answer is worth ten power points. But if you're wrong, you lose ten, okay? I'll give you a statement about the Statue of Liberty. Your job, buzz in and tell me whether it is a true or false statement. Each correct answer, like I say, gets you 10 power points, but if you're wrong, you lose 10. Remember, true or false? The artist who designed the statue modeled its face after his mother. Yes, Matt. False. Actually, it's true. Frederick Auguste Bertoldi designed the Statue of Liberty. In 1894, the statue was moved three feet to the left. Going to Andy. True. Actually, that's false. The tablet in the statue's left hand reads, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. Going to Matt. True. Actually, that's false. The pedestal is inscribed with those words from the poem by Emma Lazarus. The tablet reads July 4th, 1776. There is a Statue of Liberty Barbie doll. Yes, Rachel? False. Actually, that's true. Next, one of the men who designed the steel skeleton for the statue also built the Eiffel Tower. Going to Andy. True. Yes, it is true. Very good, Andy. Alexander Gustav Eiffel helped design the skeleton. The statue's torch was originally a huge, genuine flame that was later extinguished because it was a hazard to airplanes. Going to Andy. Actually, that's false. President Grover Cleveland dedicated the statue. Yes, Matt? False. Actually, that's true. The statue was hammered into shape by hand. Yes, Andy? True. It is true, yes. For, a, for the month of July, 1976, the statue was fitted with an arm-waving mechanism. Yes, Andy? True. Actually, it's false. All right, but that was a nice round, guys. Good for everybody. Let's see how well we did. At this point, Matt has 165 power points, Andy has 95, and Rachel has 115, which means that Matt and Rachel are gonna move on to the next phase of this mission. But Andy, you did a very good job, my friend. You really did, you made a great time pilot. You should be happy about that, okay? And now, the Chief wants to say a few words to express our appreciation. Jousting against Sir Vile can be a time pilot's toughest test. Next time, you'll be ready for him with this Acme Time Net Mission Pack. It includes a Deluxe Britannica World Atlas, this official Carmen T-shirt, the Chrono Skimmer cap with you-know-who's picture in front, a wear-in-time watch, plus this boxed set of Carmen Sandiego's greatest hits, better known as her CD-ROM library and board games. They're crammed with crimes and clues to keep you sharp for your next flight. From Acme Time Net Command, we salute you! Okay, Squadron, we've sent Andy back to Time Net Command, but we're gonna stay on board here and complete that mission. You ready for that, you think? Yes, sir. Yes, you think so? Yeah. All right, Chief, we're ready. Time pilots, the history of immigration is at stake. Get to California in 1994 and restore the statue's liberty. Kevin, you're in command. Okay, Chief. Time pilots, full speed ahead to 1994. <laughs> Look, Sir Vile's got the Statue of Liberty in a cybersphere. Activate the loot tractor beam. I must exeunt, only to joust again. 
All right, we've gotten back to the Statue of Liberty and have it safely on board. Congratulations, guys. You've completed mission objective number one. Plus, you're now one step closer to winning that amazing multimedia computer system. But before we continue chasing Servile, we've got to return the loot to the year 1886. So let's check in with the Chief to get our flight plan. Chief! Time pilots, you must navigate the chrono skimmer through eight events from the history of immigration, starting at the most recent event and finishing at the least recent event. The time pilot who does that goes on to chase Carmen and Servile along the trail of time. Here are the events on your flight plan. The Ellis Island Immigration Center opens. The Statue of Liberty turns 100. Albert Einstein immigrates to the U.S. The Statue of Liberty is dedicated. Japanese Americans are confined to internment camps during World War II. Led Zeppelin records immigrant song. Charlie Chaplin's film, The Immigrant, debuts. Aliens migrate to Earth in the movie Independence Day. That's your briefing time, pilots. Good luck on your journey. Okay. Matt, you had the highest score. You have the choice of going first or second. I'll go first. All right, in that case, Matt, I want you to navigate this chrono skimmer back through time from the most recent event to the least recent event, starting by picking the most recent event on the board. You may begin. Um, Independence Day premieres. Correct, 1996. The Statue of Liberty turns 100. Yes, you've plotted, of course, to 1986. $70 million was spent to restore the statue. Keep going. Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. Yes, you've plotted, of course, to 1970. The post-digital jug band Washboard Jungle did a famous parody of this song. Keep going. Einstein emigrates to the U.S. Okay, back to Rachel, picking the most recent event. Indep Independence Day premieres. Yes, 1996. Statue of Liberty turns 100. Yes, 1986. Six. Immigrant song by Led Zeppelin. Correct, 1970. U U.S. confined Japanese Americans. Yes, you've steered us to 1942. The U.S. government sent over 100,000 Japanese Americans to internment camps. Einstein em emigrates to the U.S. Yes, 1933. Einstein was a Jew forced to leave Nazi Germany. Keep going. Chaplin's the immigrant debuts. Yes, 1917. Okay, keep going. Statue of Liberty dedicated. Okay, back to Matt. Independence Day premieres. Yes, 1996. Statue of, of, of Liberty turns 100. Correct, 1986. Immigrant song by Led Zeppelin. Yes, 1970. U.S. combines Japanese Americans. Correct, 1942. Einstein emigrates to the U.S. Yes, 1933. Keep going. Chaplin's The Immigrant debuts. Yes, 1917. Keep going. Ellis Island Immigration Center opens. Yes, 1892. Keep going. Statue of Liberty dedicated. Correct, you have saved history, Matt. Congratulations. Way to go, buddy. And you did a great job of getting us there, Rachel. We had a good squad today, I think, all of us, you know? And we're not done. You and I are gonna move on in just a moment. And Rachel, the Chief, has a word about your next mission. You've done some great navigation today. So, we're promoting you to Special Time Net Advanced Command, or SPINAC. Okay, the nickname needs some work, but you'll receive a complete Time Net mission pack and this feature-packed portable CD player. Its compact size and rechargeable batteries let you take your tunes to all your favorite places and times. From the gang here at TimeNet Command, congratulations!